Hey guys, I'm back. Pudge. I think Pudge is done throwing a tantrum. First things first, this shirt, I just texted my sister and said I want to be cremated in this shirt. Um, her and my future brother-in-law got this for me for Christmas and it's a freaking monstera leaf with a pug face blended in. Like, if there was ever a plant shirt that won, like, like for like overall design, like this one, this is it for me. It's like my favorite plant, my favorite dog in one. I'm obsessed with it. Um, I don't know where she got it. It says, I wonder if I can just rip the tag off. Canvas. So if you're looking for this shirt, I'll see if I can link it, but obsessed my ear keeps clicking oh my gosh we are back here with our first repot of the year i didn't want to brand this as like first repotting of the season because as we all know i'm sure if this does not stop clicking i'm sure we're all sort of aware by now that when we grow in um controlled environments or just growing indoors in general many of our plants won't see seasons or they won't feel the seasons because they just they're in a controlled environment they're getting the same amount of light and warmth and whatever throughout the year so they just keep growing but um i will say that a lot of my plants probably could have used a lot of my plants could, oh my god it's clicking i don't know why it's clicking a lot of my plants could have used a repot um over this winter but i just I was in California, I was just filming like crazy, trying to get videos up, and it's just been a time. So this video is gonna be like a handful, a little bit more than a handful of plants that are just super overdue for a repot. Um, I have a ton more that need to be repotted, but these are sort of my urgent ones, and I will kind of give you an idea of why they're urgent um, off the bat, because if I show you what I'm repotting as I'm doing it, this is going to get a lot more insane. Okay, I'm just not having a good time right now. There's something attacking my eye violently. I can literally see it. So thank you guys for watching another video. I'm going to go um, see you in the next one. Okay, I'm really going to try and get through this, but I am going to just show you guys what I'm repotting right now because as this video progresses the messier this is going to be and it's going to be hard to show you so i'm going to just quickly move my little table here and start showing you the plant so the first one i am running over and there's sap everywhere good job sherman it's my little water vase of Hoyas. So if you guys watched my video that went up sometime in December, we hosted a little um, Christmas thing here with some plant friends and Erin just brought over like a box of goodies. So if you guys don't know, she um, is sort of taking a back seat with the plant stuff right now and she's just fully in her horse girl era. Um, you can follow her at uh, Bishop Rides. Um, is it Bishop Rides or Erin Rides? <laughs> Did I just make that up? Aaron rides? I think it's Aaron rides. I'm a bad friend. Aaron rides. I think it should be Bishop rides, but Aaron rides. Um, she bought a horse, so she is just always riding her horse, and um, she just chopped a bunch of her plants and was like, "Take this," and this was one of them. So one is a Hoya Croniana, silver, Lacanosa. It's one of them. And then this one, I probably should have gotten the ID for before I started filming. I actually already have a cutting of this and I'm thinking of just combining it. But at the same time, I don't know if I have space. We're going to have to figure it out. These are just water rooted. This one's really long. I might give this one a chop because I literally have nowhere to put something this long. And the water roots are popping off like crazy. So it's going to be the perfect time to get it into moss. Moss? into pond, not moss. Uh, the second one is, uh, the lawn mowers are here. I hope you guys can't hear them. But the second one is this philodendron Esmeralda dense narrow that I picked up from Lauren also in December. She said that hers like struggled to root a little bit, but mine rooted pretty fast just in water. So this is kind of how long I like to get the water roots before I move it to um, Lechuza Pond. And you guys can see some of the roots have dried up 
uh, at the tips that are out of water. So I really need to get this into pond. This one, uh, you guys have seen, I think twice now since I've chopped it. Um, obviously Florida Beauty, I chopped this one for my mom and we struggled a little bit. I lost, I think I lost five leaves on this cutting, um, but she's made a comeback. She is super duper rooted. The roots are way longer than I want them to be. A lot of them have dried up at the top or like at the parts that are coming out of the water. So I really need to get this repotted. I typically don't like to repot anything when an emergent leaf is coming because I am notorious for just like, what is it, decapitating the, the, the new leaf or like the tip of the new leaf but I don't care. We're gonna get this um, repotted and I think I'm even gonna try and get it onto a pole. We will see how ambitious I'm feeling today. So you guys would have never seen these um, plants on my channel, but Alice would have posted a video on her page. We slapped for more Amanda plants. Amanda sent us um, another box of goodies when I was in California. So these are two of them that desperately need to be repotted. The first one is this, what I believe is maybe an Ethereum Portali crossed with a PAP. Maybe, that's just like a stab in the dark. I literally haven't even asked her for the ID yet, but it is freaking Gorgina. I am just fully obsessed with this plant, but it's still in, I want to say this is tree fern fiber and it's in the original like packaging. She sent it in and it's been maybe, uh, I wanna say it's been like three three or four weeks now. So we are long overdue for a repot for this poor guy. And I'm really sorry. Okay, this has been like the bane of my existence over the last like two weeks. I've been trying to figure out my camera settings. So when I film in here, the light is beautiful, but as I move in and out of the frame and like show things, the white balance just like blows up like crazy and it bothers me. I hate it so much. I tried filming on a different setting the last video, the propagation video, and it was just a little bit too like emos, indie, cinematic. It was like had a very like dull gray sort of texture or like color to it and I couldn't fix it. So we're back to the original settings. I've tried to turn off some of the lights, but it's just a hot mess. So just, just ignore it. And then the last one, I'm not even really sure how this ended up in my house, but she also sent an Ethereum Queen of Hearts. This one was actually just a stump when I received it. Um, and this one pushed out in my care. So I am very excited about this plant, but again, it, it's, it's still in the original tree fern fiber. It's probably so dry in there. So this video needed to happen like two weeks ago, but again, just playing catch up here. Those are the ones on hand that I just kind of saw that needed a, an immediate repot. Um, another one that I could do is my Milano Chrysum, my big one, but I don't know if I'm like in this headspace to like tackle that right now. And then also there's a Gloriosum, oh you can't see it, but there's a Gloriosum up there that desperately needs to be repotted because it's like pushed up against the, the wall of the pot, but we're gonna get through these first, and if I have enough energy, then maybe we will tackle those too. So that is the roster for today. Um, I probably don't have enough pawn made for all of these, but I do have a lot of pawn left from Ina at the Variegated Plant Shop, so I think I will maybe prepare that on camera or off camera, I'm not sure. But anyway, yeah, let's just get started because we've, we've got a long day. I'm going to try and not create such a hot mess in here and I, that's one thing that I really need to like work on because not only is filming stressful when I'm doing repots because it just tends to get really crazy but even when I'm repotting off camera I tend to just fling things everywhere and like not put things back as I'm taking it out and then by the end of it I don't want to clean up and it ends up being a mess for like a week so I'm gonna try and be like, I don't know, a little bit orderly here. So I think I wanna do the easiest one first, which I believe is gonna be the Hoyas. I think that I'm going to start with these Hoyas because it should theoretically be the easiest ones. I mentioned that this guy was way too long. Um, I don't think that I'm gonna grow this in my new, well, it's not my new, my light's falling. Perfect. That's literally not gonna stay, but 
Um, I'm gonna grow this, I think, on my living room shelf because this is so long. I have no idea where it would even go in there because it is super packed. Um, oh, obviously elephant in the room. I still have my tent. My tent is back where it used to be and I just figured that I would move this in here because I'm doing something a little different to my living room. So yeah, Hoya cabinet is back in here. My Millsville wide is housing aeroids again. Um, I'll do another plant room tour sometime, maybe in February or something. I'm not quite sure how long I wanna cut this. I think I'm just gonna cut off sort of this tail end stuff. It is gonna bleed. What do I wanna do? I could dip it in calyxing hormone right away. Um, okay. I'm gonna chop off like maybe right here. Don't bleed, don't bleed. Nope, <laughs> you see, she wasn't fast enough. It's already a disaster and we just started. So I've got this guy here that I will let callus over. And then I'm gonna cut like right here where it gets really, really leggy. You can see there's like a leaf here and then it's just like all this little rat tail. So I'm gonna cut. <laughs> I don't know how to do this without having it bleed. We've got it. Bam. And just as a reminder, my little callusing hormone is a mixture of um, cinnamon, sulfur powder, and rooting hormone. So I think this is good. I think I can, that's a little bit more workable. Oh, there's sap everywhere, you guys. This is a freaking disaster. No, stop. Stop it. Let's get this out of here. Oh no, it's all tangled. I think for this one, I will put it in the smaller one. And I think what these are, are actually just, cause I got these at the thrift store. I think these are the old um, Ikea candles. I'm pretty sure that's what these are. It kind of looks just like the, the vessel that they put it in. Yeah, it looked like this when I got it from the thrift store. So whoever had it obviously reused it for a little bit, but very, very nifty. And I definitely will be, I can't even tell you guys how many times I do that. I'm definitely gonna be doing a vessel haul soon um, because I'm like literally like clear out of vessels. Like these vessels that I'm using right now are like the last of the last. I could probably add a little bit more perlite to stretch it further. What do I wanna do here? I mean, the ratio seems kind of okay, but it's a little bit more pawn heavy than I'm used to. But at the same time, when I add more perlite, my vessels dry out so much faster. And with a vessel this size, I feel like if I add more perlite, it's going to, um, yeah, I'm just gonna leave it. So a question that I get asked pretty often is, um, I'm just using TPS billions, by the way, to inoculate it. A question that I get asked often is why do I choose certain substrates for different plants? Like what makes me decide, oh, I'm gonna put this into soil or I'm gonna put this into pond or LECA or whatever. And honestly, there's not sort of like a, like a mathematical equation in my head or like a flow chart in my brain. I kind of just go with my gut. So typically if something has been water rooted, my immediate thought is I'm gonna move it to pond or I'm gonna move it to LECA. Um, but if it has water roots, but it's something that I feel like would do better in soil, whether it be um, just my experience with that plant from before, or if it dries out really, really fast and I know that I could maybe use like a denser soil mix, um, or if it's like a bigger plant and I don't wanna use a whole bunch of pond, uh, then yeah, I'll make that transition even if it has water roots, but it truly just depends. I mean, I would say that maybe, I want I, I think maybe 75% of my collection is currently in pond, um, if I had to take a guess, and that's just because I've had a lot of success growing in pond, and, oh, what's happening here? 
And I do still love soil, but I found that in terms of maintenance with no drainage, Pond has kind of worked a little bit better for me. And the reason I say that is because with soil, um, no matter if you have, I don't think it's tall enough. <laughs> Freaking A, man. I'm gonna opt for something taller because I got some of these beautiful roots just sticking out and I would like to submerge them. So, anywho, um, fuck, what was I saying? It's getting messy already. Yeah, oh, the reason why um, I feel more comfortable putting a thirstier plant in pond rather than soil is because no matter if you're using that water reservoir level with soil, like with if you do like leka down at the bottom and then soil, I find that even when you leave a reserve in soil, um, it it can still get a little bit muddy because the leka is gonna wick it upwards into the soil. And then that bottom layer of soil that has that, um, what is that called? But it basically holds the most amount of water in that soil, it can get a little muddy. And I'm not saying that that should be a deterrent for using soil with no drainage, because I do it successfully. I have plenty of plants that are growing in no drainage with soil. But if a plant is super thirsty and I know that it needs to be watered pretty frequently, I feel better about putting it in pond because it's not going to be muddy. It's, you know, pond is a lot more porous than soil, um, especially if you are using a perlite heavy mix. What is happening here? I just feel better about leaving more water in the vessel when I'm using pond. So when I have a plant that I know I'm is just notoriously thirsty or does well with a little bit of water all the time, like an alocasia, um, yeah, I will opt for pond. But like for my larger plants, I will usually always opt for soil because I'm not gonna fill like a 10 inch pot with pond or a 12 inch pot with pond. I will always use soil. Most of my pond plants are in like six inch, um, vessels or smaller. I don't really recommend doing um, pond with larger plants just because of how much pond it requires and it gets really heavy. So let's just say you have like a 10 inch gloriosum, right? Or a gloriosum in a 10 inch pot. And this is a plant that you like frequently need to take to the shower to wash off. Um, bringing it to the shower is not going to be a fun time. So I just like, you know, cut the headache out in the beginning and I'll just be soil because it's just a lot lighter. But really, I, I, I don't have like a recipe for why. It's just, I think the more you understand your plants and what it needs and what it does best in or like the conditions that it needs, you just, I mean, you guys know, I think, like you just have that gut feeling of like what's gonna be best for it um, substrate wise. So yeah, I'm sorry if that wasn't like, I didn't have like a definitive answer, but that's, it's truly like the only thing I can say because there's not like a, oh, it mark, it checks this, this, and this box, so I'm gonna put it in this. Um, it's really just like, how am I feeling about the plant? Um, am I struggling with the plant? Do, do the roots rot often? Um, is it a super hardy plant? It's, there's so many like factors that like you take into account when you're picking substrates. So. Anyway, I, that was a lot of talking for potting one plant. Okay, I'm going to just put this over here for now. Hopefully I don't forget about her. The next one is the Silver Girl. Gosh, these roots are pretty deep too. Because I wanted to... I wanted to pot it in this one. I might have to sacrifice some of those roots that are going to be sticking out. This is so pretty. I think I have another one that I can combine it with. I'm trying to not have like doubles of plants that I don't like super duper duper love. But where is it? Where is it? What the hecky? Oh, you know what? It's out on my shelf. I wonder if I should go get it. I think this might be two different plants. But part of me just wants to combine it anyway. I'm gonna do it. So, um, updates while we're here. 
I didn't really brand this as a repot and chat because I didn't really have anything to chat about, but um, just kind of something that is going on over here. I have been, I've been working on merch and I'm actually really excited about it because after just like months of going back and forth between um, like a theme that I wanted to follow, I finally found one that like I feel, I feel really good about it and it's something that I would want to wear all the time. But here's the issue. I don't want to um, house the product. Like I don't want to have to order product in bulk and then end up having like a bunch that don't sell or whatever. I don't want to be the one shipping it because I already know that I'm going to get behind on shipping. And it's just one more thing that I don't think that I have the capacity for. So I'm trying to work with a company that basically does everything for you. You send them the designs, they make them, they, it's a print on demand, so they only make it once an order comes in. They fulfill it, they host your like website or whatever. You know, the profit margin is smaller for me because they're basically doing all the work, but I'm not looking to make like, I'm not looking to retire off this money. It's kind of just like an extra little thing that I wanted to do. The only thing with these kinds of companies though is that obviously they're not gonna just take on anyone that wants to work with them because then I, you know, they would lose money that way. They want to work with people who they know or they feel will generate income for them that will be a successful, you know, partnership or whatever. And a lot of the times, these companies are looking for creators who have followings into the hundreds of thousands, millions, right? Um, and it, I knew that it was sort of a shot in the dark to see if anyone would be willing to work with me, but I was like, I might as well try. And yeah, it's gone pretty much exactly how I thought it would go. I've been brutally shut down three times by three different companies who are basically like year followings, way too small for this kind of thing, um, which I get, but at the same time, it kind of sucks because I feel like a lot of, like people can buy followers, right? Like would it have made a difference if I bought like 20 more thousand subscribers or followers or whatever to make it seem like my following is more inflated than it is? and then they would take me on like you'd get the same kind of you'd get the same kind of result because you know that's not a real following and i'm not saying that like if i made merch that it would like fly off the shelves but i feel like i'm in such a niche market um that even though i don't have as much following as like an influencer uh, an influencer in the millions like the things that i would be pushing on this channel is very niche to whatever 13,000 that are here. All they want to know is your numbers. They want to just know like how many subscribers you have, how many followers you have, and that's like the basis of what they make their recommend or that's sort of like their marker if they'll work with you or not. Which I find kind of dumb because it's I don't know. You can tell I'm a little bit salty, but I just it's not that I feel like entitled for them to work with me, but I just wish that the screening process was a little bit more fine-tuned rather than just what they see on the surface. So I don't know, whatever. I, I'm gonna keep looking and if it comes to it and I do have to, you know, house my merch and be the one to ship it, then then so be it. But the runs will definitely be a lot smaller than um I'd like it to be so just because you know there is like that initial investment if you are gonna just buy merch so there's a lot of things going on and um, I'm not really in the best place to just be like investing in something like that right now especially since I don't know how it's gonna do something that I've learned um, owning a few businesses now is that just because you love a design or you think something's gonna do really well because 20, 30, 40 people are reacting to it in a positive way, it does not mean that those, that that reaction is gonna reflect what it's gonna be like when it's actually on sale. That's just something that I learned the hard way. And um, you know, now when I sort of go into like a new business venture, I'm, I go into it very, almost pessimistically. And um, I'm just very skeptical about what the outcome will be. 
So even though like a lot of you have expressed interest in wanting merch and again to reiterate I'm not doing any merch that's like specific to me. I'm designing it as if it's like just what any plant person would like to wear. I'm just a little bit skeptical about going that direction of having to buy the merch outright and then like basically sell it on my own because I would like to use a company that can basically do everything for me and only make it once it's ordered. Um, the idea of print on demand is ideal for me. I don't know. I just don't know if that's going to be feasible with the amount of subscribers that I have now. I might have to push it off and wait until maybe if I get more subs to make these freaking companies want to work with me. I don't know what it's going to take, but I am working on it. And I really wish that I could like talk about what the theme is going to be, but at the same time, um, I know that like the, uh, cause I was in the fashion industry for like 10 years and I know how cutthroat it is. The second you put any idea out there, somebody's gonna, somebody's gonna take it. So I'm not gonna say anything just yet, but I think it's a really great concept and I'm excited about it. And I hope that it can come to fruition one day. I'm just trying to be smart about things because I'm not raking it in. Um, I'm definitely super, super duper middle class and I don't just have like extra thousands or whatever to spend on a whole line of merch. So, um, and then also along with the styles that I'm releasing and I'm only planning on releasing three styles, um, I'll do a reprint of the Tales of the Thrift shirt, but I think it's going to be slightly redesigned. Not too much, just very, very minute um, tweaks. She potted and it's kind of funny this little black streak here It's kind of like when people have like a blonde streak in their hair or if you're blonde and you have a black streak That's what she's giving um, So anywho, she's done. Okay. It's still somewhat clean here Okay, I'm not gonna go crazy All right, the next one is gonna be this Imperium Queen of Hearts and I swear I'm not naked These shorts are just like violently short. I believe this is in tree fern fiber, but I want to move it to pond. I have been saving this very special vessel for a very special plant. This is currently my favorite vessel right now. I thrifted it. It was like $3, but I just love the shape of it. I love the weight of it. It's a beautiful planter. So I think that this queen of hearts definitely deserves something really pretty. I'm going to reuse the tree fern fiber because why not? I'm gonna bring you guys closer because I'm gonna just clean this up a little bit. Here's what's going on with this thing. So um, this is where um, an old petiole would have been. So it looks like she newly sort of pulled it off. Well, I know she did. <laughs> she chopped off some really big, beautiful leaves when um, she shipped it. And that's just, that's just pure Amanda style. She like doesn't care. She definitely has that mentality that it's like, no matter how pristine the leaf is, plants regrow and uh, it's not a big deal. So I'm just gonna like sort of peel off some of that gunk. This root right here is rotten. So I'm gonna chop this off. And I'm gonna chop it as close as I can so that no more rot is left on it. And then there was another leaf here. <laughs> she just karate chopped a bunch of them off. While I have you guys at this angle, I'm just adding some hydrogen peroxide with some water. 
And I'm just gonna um, let this Queen of Hearts chunk soak in here for a little bit just to like clean off some of the debris and you'll see that it starts to bubble and it gets it nice and clean. Um, a lot of the times when you do these hydrogen peroxide soaps, <laughs> what? When you do these hydrogen peroxide soaks, um, do you guys see some of that debris left on this root? Like let's say, cause I'm gonna be moving this to pond eventually, but since it doesn't have any new roots on it, I'm actually gonna just put it in perlite for a while, but I want these roots to be as clean as possible. So once it's soaked in hydrogen peroxide for like, 10 20 minutes this comes off pretty easily you can just like wipe it off or even a toothbrush so many new roots in here this one loves tree fern fiber Got some root breakage because I waited so dang long, but I'm not worried about it. This thing is rooting and tooting like crazy. Roots are freaking amazing. It like did not even care that it was like in saran wrap for three weeks, but um, there is a lot of tree fern fiber stuck to these roots and I will be moving this to pond. So I'm also going to be soaking this in hydrogen peroxide for maybe 15, 20 minutes just to see how much can sort of melt off there and then I will get it potted. So like I was saying, um, a lot of the times once you've been soaking it in hydrogen peroxide, like with just a little bit of rubbing action, you can remove a lot of that grit that was stuck. Hello? No, you don't want to focus? Okay, <laughs> that was a fail. And it just kind of like comes right off but i'm not really really worried about stuff like this when i'm moving it to pond it's more so the actual like fibers of moss and tree fern fiber and soil that i want to remove and so we're gonna move this to perlite and call it a day on her and hopefully this new leaf unfurls okay because she's kind of been scrunched up like this for like three days Since I inoculated this um, and the perlite is wet, I'm actually gonna leave this for a couple hours and then once um, I feel like it's enough time has gone by, I'll add water but tilt it a little bit this way and pour it in that way so that all the mycorrhizal inoculants don't get washed away from the roots. And I will fill to maybe about here. This guy has been sitting in here for about 10 minutes. I would have liked to do it a little longer but it's okay. I'm hoping I can get just a little bit more of these fibers off of here without causing too much damage to the roots because they're really beautiful and I don't want to mess with it. But you guys can see it's definitely coming off a lot easier than if you were to try and do it dry. And I'm really just gonna try and get off some of these larger fibers and not worry about the ones that are kind of like stained onto the roots. So once I try and remove as much as possible, I'll get it back into the hydrogen peroxide mix, leave it for maybe another five minutes, and then I will repot it. Letting this guy soak for a couple minutes and I am getting a headache. Why am I getting a headache? Um, I think the next thing I'm gonna do is my Esmeral Dense and I do wanna actually get this on a pole. Now, the only thing I regret, I think, 
is not chopping it down one more node so that I could root this one instead of this one because this is gonna look funky on a pole. But you know what? We're just gonna make it work. As you guys know, I've been using a lot of, oh my God, my tinnitus, tinnitus, oh, ear probs. So you guys know that I've been using a lot of those pre-made poles like from Propagation Diaries, the Climb Trellis or the Climb Pole, and then um, Lauren's poles with the little like, honeycomb sort of beehive design in the front. And I do love those, but I like them for larger established plants. I still much prefer the Lazy Pole for plants like this that are just kind of starting off. So I kind of want to fill the bottom with LECA. The reason I am opting for LECA for this vessel specifically is because I don't want to have to fill this entire thing with pond right away. Um, I want to be able to use as little pond as possible and uh, that's really the only reason. That is going nuts so I'm gonna mute this volume because it's gonna be very, very loud. And then I'm gonna stick the pole on top of this layer of LECA and just see if it's gonna be tall enough. Now, I actually would want to raise it up a little higher so that I have more um, wiggle room, not wiggle room, but I have more um, room for it to grow. So then I will do I'm hearing things, you guys. And the reason I like to bury it a good amount is because it really, really offers some good stabilization, but I don't want to put it too low. So I do want to do a little bit higher, but I want to get my plant in there right away. And I probably should cut my straps too. Not working with a massive root system, but it's okay because I can just continue the rooting process in this pond. Um, I am gonna cut some straps now before I get things really settled. I can actually do a pretty thick strap for that center piece. Now I'm going to put one of the thicker lazy straps down at the bottom. It's such a strange cutting because this leaf is like a helicopter. foundation now the question of uh, do I want to do because I can actually opt to do um, pond all the way up to this node here if I raise this strap like this I can fill this whole thing with pond and then start doing moss up here but I also don't want it to be too heavy on those little teeny tiny roots I should have added more perlite but it's too late for us now So here is where we're at. Um, I basically used this bottom strap as like a pot extender. Um, it's like an extension literally of the pot. And now I can get some nice beautiful pond roots on that bottom node and use it as insurance in case something happens with these roots right here. My only concern at this point, like I said, is I 
am using a heavier pond mix. I'm, I'm really getting used to using a very perlite heavy pond. Um, my only issue is that things dry out a lot faster than I would like them to, even with a big or like a larger reserve down at the bottom of water. <sighs> so I am hoping that those little tiny roots will be okay under all of this weight. But um, yeah, we're just gonna keep our fingers crossed. I'm gonna keep monitoring it. Uh, if it rots, it rots. I've got plenty of stem to work with. I'm going to actually keep the water line covering most of this LECA, if not maybe three quarters. And then I'm gonna fill this with moss right after I prepare some more pond because we are really low on pond. I still have to do my Florida Beauty and potentially my Milano, my Milano Chrysum. So you guys will take an ad break. I'm gonna go prepare some pond and then we will regroup. It's messy. We failed, we failed miserably, but you know, next time. Uh, how do I wanna do this? I hate this part, it's so messy. I also, I also put on longer shorts because I feel like you guys were seeing way too much Beginda and I apologize. You guys can't see anything, but I'm filling. I'm filling back here, okay? But I need to like keep some shred of my sanity while I'm filming. It's gotta be like four o'clock. I'm shaking with hunger. Oh, it's one. out my abs they're on fire but uh, you don't want to pack too tightly when you're filling your moss poles or else your roots will have nowhere to go and also when you go to water it it's gonna become hydrophobic it's gonna turn into a log it's just gonna roll off the edges so you want there to be enough air pockets in between the moss so that when you go to water it, it's actually seeping through the whole thing she's done it is hot in here very hot I need to turn off the heater I'm I'm sweating I forgot to inoculate that plant, but it's okay because TPS Billions is water soluble, so I can inoculate it uh, just by watering it. <sighs> okay. Oh, my back, she's getting old. We're gonna go back to this gal over here who's been soaking for a little bit too long, but it's okay. Still got tons of like tree fern fiber fibers, tree fern fiber fibers stuck to here, but not worrying about it, it's gonna be fine. Do I have a vessel? Crud. Did I freaking use the vessel? I was, I don't know. I'm gonna use this one for now and then I'll find a cover pot for it. Oh, I was supposed to prepare pawn. You see, the thing with ADHD. <laughs> freaking heck. I have my pawn that I just need to mix. Probably could have gone a little heavier on the perlite, but we're not in that kind of mood today. Um, I'm gonna link this pond in the description. This is again from Variegated Plant Shop in Vegas and they can ship to Canada and obviously uh, nationwide in the US, but they do not ship plants to Canada. I think I'm also going to be adding a strap around this guy just because there are some roots up at the top here that are exposed that I ideally would like to cover. I just don't know if it's gonna work, but we're gonna try. I have done this on camera before, but just in case you've missed it in many of my videos, um, I am trying to slowly work my way back, starting from my oldest videos, adding bookmarks. Um, because, well not, I don't think they're called bookmarks. Oh, they're called chapters. And I didn't even know that was a thing until recently. So, um, I'm definitely going to utilize it, especially for my videos that are super long or videos like my alocasia video, stuff where like you are looking for specific information. Um, I got a comment recently that was like, 
Why would you have a three hour video and no um, chapters? Sorry, I didn't know that they existed. Uh, hello. Oh, maybe I'll put this around this one. Okay. And then I'm gonna fill some inside of the little strap. Not my greatest work, but um, I'm feeling better about those roots at the top of the stem being more covered. I really hope this leaf gets slightly larger because that's a lot of petiole for very little leaf. <laughs> uh, one more, my Florida Beauty. I really don't think I have it in me to repot any of those today because I feel like I've just reached my my capacity and I'm also filming for the vlog channel today so I need to still have a little bit of energy left. I'm gonna be cleaning today which I'm really excited about. Oh my lanta. We're 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 long overdue. Um I'm gonna reuse this pot I think. <sighs> I need to get it cleaned. I'm gonna go a little bit heavier on the perlite for this mix specifically because I feel like last time, because I have tried to transfer this to pond already, I think it was too heavy and that's why it rotted. Also talking about perlite, another question that I get asked often is which grade of perlite do I use? And I believe this is number four grade and it should be linked in my um, Amazon US page. The perlite that I'm using is from the States, it's not from Canada. Um, when I'm using Canadian perlite, I usually use Wilbro brand and I believe that's grade three and it's not as coarse. This one has a lot more um, air pockets, it's a little coarser and rougher than the Wilbro brand. The Wilbro brand is a little bit smoother, less air pockets um, and I actually prefer the Wilbro over this one but it's a lot more expensive. Doing a little layer at the bottom. Shit, I need a pole. I'm gonna use one of um, Lauren's poles and I don't wanna stick it too far down because this guy is a grower and a shower. Oh shit. <laughs> I don't wanna have to chop this leaf off. It's so funny because this leaf has stayed but I lost like five leaves above it. So I got this like one single leaf down here and I could chop it so that I could propagate it again, but do I want to is the question. No, I'll just shove it in there. Okay, that's what we're doing. If it breaks, it breaks. Oh, one thing I did want to do though before I do this. Um, you'll see that these roots up here, which is why they dried out, they're growing upward. So I'm going to try and separate it as much as possible because when I repot it, I want them pointing downward or else they're going to grow up out of the pot very fast. I'm not quite sure why some plants grow roots this way. I've read that it could be a light thing, like they're growing upward toward the light or something. I don't freaking know. But I've definitely noticed it with this plant. I've noticed it with my Esmeral Dense Aff. Um, they're usually all philodendrons that do this, but I usually just reroute them back down and uh, tell them that they're going the wrong way. Oh, I've actually seen some alocasias do this as well. My Freidic loves to grow upward. <laughs> this plant is always such a pain in the ass to repot. And then I think I'm going to do the pole like sitting right above the substrate. So uh, we need some myco. <sighs> Waiting on my Amazon delivery. I'm. <laughs> I'm out of toothpaste and I was going to just run over to Walmart and grab some but it was actually like a dollar cheaper to get a pack of three on Amazon and I just broke that root. Perfect. I'm going to push it forward against this vessel over here so I can fit the hole.
What I'm also going to do is put a layer, oh my gosh, it's so yellow. Um, I'm gonna put a small layer of pine up to maybe about here. So I'm just gonna tilt her back and then go. I've got one really, really good aerial root if I didn't break it going into the pole right now. Yep, right there. So I'm actually gonna make a, do I wanna make a strap? I'm, I'm contemplating if I wanna add a small strap where that one root is going in just to kind of enclose that humidity a little bit more. But my issue is that this petiole is in the way I could lift it. Yeah, I'm gonna try it. So I've got one strap here, which I think might be too thick, but let's see. So I've got one really good root going into this moss pole and I've enclosed it so that that humidity doesn't dry out so fast. And I think she's good. I'm feeling good about the root placement. I'm feeling good about them pointing downward. I like that I can see some of the roots along the edges here just to see how it's coming along. And now we really, really need to say a little prayer and hope that this second time around is more successful than the first. Okay, do I have it in me for one more? Do I? Definitely not the Milano. That is just way too big of a endeavor for me right now. I can maybe like muster up the courage for a smaller plant that needs to be repotted. But who? I've been wanting to convert my Cupria, or not my Cupria, my Mellow to Pond, but I feel like doing that is gonna just make it just collapse and, and die. Who needs me? Speak now. Ugh, I'm slouching, gross. I could pop my belly. Actually, let's do that, because she's way overdue. So this is a propagation that I took from one of my billies, and she's like really rooted into this little Starbucks cup. I've added rocks because it kept tipping over, and now it's like wrapped around the rocks, and I'm kind of tempted to just pot it with the rocks because I don't care. See if I can just pluck her out. She's growing so cute, her little growth pattern. She's so bushy and compact. She's not doing that thing that billies do where they like face downward. Love her. Oh, okay, well that one's released. Oh, that was easy enough. All right, we're just gonna leave it. We're not going to fuss with it too much. I'm gonna inoculate it. I'm tired now. These roots are also facing upward, but I can tell they're so rigid that if I move it, it's gonna snap. So I just spread it on. Hopefully the weight of the pond will keep it down. Easy enough. That was worth the five minute investment. Um, so, I think that is it for all of the repots that I'm gonna do today. The next repot is going to be not so much of like emergency, well, I have some emergency repots that are like, like plants that are not doing well at all, including one of my Lux hybrids from Amanda. I need to get that sorted. I have a bunch of other plants that are just like busting out of their pots. So. Definitely, we'll have some more repots coming soon. Um, I will show you guys the new setup in here. I will show you how sad my tent looks. Um, I am now using it as a rehab center, which I kind of love, but it just looks really sad in there. Um, and yeah, we've just got lots and lots to do already. Um, it's only January and it's been pretty eventful in terms of the growth in here. So uh, yeah, I'm excited to see sort of how these do now that they're finally out of water. And if you guys have any questions for me, please feel free to leave those in the comments. Yeah, thank you guys for watching another video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you liked it. If you didn't like it, I'm sorry. 
um, and I will see you in the next one.